Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about coffee grinders. I mean, what's new, right? You guys love them. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about grinders that are under $1,200, but above $600 with large flat burrs. So we've got the DF83 here. We have three of them, one of them being the version two, two of them being the version one, and each one has a different burr set. We have the Niche Duo here, and this has two burr sets. And then we have the Sculptor 078 and 078S. And then we have the Zerno Z1. Now this one is not big burrs like these. This one is a 64 millimeter burr. And I thought it would be fitting to add this grinder because we're gonna be talking lots about 83 millimeter burrs. Right here, I've got item mill burrs, Mauser burrs, we've got DLC burrs, we've got SSP burrs. But I also wanna talk about if 83 millimeter burrs is that much better than 64 millimeter burrs. So today we're gonna to break this down by doing a quick overview, followed by a taste test, and then a verdict for each grinder. And at the end, then we're gonna talk about burrs and comparing burr sets, which one I find personally best for me, and which one you may prefer based on your needs. I'll get pretty specific for espresso and filter, and basically the burrs that might be best for multi-use cases. I have time codes down below, and if you appreciate videos like this, please do me a quick favor hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and to be able to do videos like this it takes a lot of work and time and so it takes two seconds for you to hit that like button but it helps this channel out a ton really would appreciate that subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on this including the Zerno review that will be coming soon and let me know in the comments down below what coffee you're drinking today I'll be reading every single one of those comments and I'm excited to see which coffee which roaster which origin which producer you're drinking let me know down below all right, friends, so today we're gonna to start off with the Sculptor 078 series. Now this is a very hyped grinder. I've compared this a few months ago, talked about the 078S, the 078, and I talked about the 078 as one of the better burr grinders for filter coffee. Now we're gonna talk more about that in the taste comparison, but this is a very interesting grinder just coming off of a Kickstarter and raising almost $6 million on Kickstarter, which is insane. They're not quite in the public yet, and so today I'm gonna to give some clarity for those who are still wondering, waiting to receive it, or maybe waiting to purchase this grinder. Now this grinder does come in at $650 at its full retail price. It was cheaper on Kickstarter. And these ones are a variable RPM flat burr 78 millimeter grinder. They both use a proprietary 78 millimeter burr designed by Time More and designed in-house. The 078, which is this white model here, is a ghost burr. They call their turbo burrs. It has a very different unique style of burrs rather than having blades. It actually has teeth that crunch and, and break down the beans rather than cutting them. And the 078S is their espresso take on this grinder. It has traditional flat burrs, again, proprietary built in house, and they're both variable of 800 up to 1400 RPMs. Again, it's $650 and they have a 400 watt motor. Plenty powerful, very quiet. It's a unique style. I think they look pretty good. With the white, you get a clear hopper up here. With the black, it is not. And the other reality is with the 078S, you have a stepless grinding adjustment. In the 078, it is partially stepped. It has soft steps, so you can use the spaces in between each step. And it's got this fines cleaner up here. Uh, it's basically just a knocker, but it's a really unique one and really well engineered. And like I mentioned earlier, these are variable RPM. So on the back, you have a dial to change the speed of the burrs. They go from 800 up to 1400 RPMs. It's got lots of magnets from magnets on the hopper to magnets on the dosing cup to even magnets on the dial on the front. If you remove this and you can clean your burrs inside, this all goes back with magnets. It feels pretty good. It feels very premium, but we'll talk more about my build quality thoughts on this and the verdict at the end of this video. This is the Niche Duo. And yeah, it's the niche killer, okay? It's the niche that came after the niche. This is a flapper version of the niche zero, and this is their version two, and it's a big 83 millimeter flapper grinder. So these are the burrs that come inside the niche duo. They are Mauser burrs. This is the 151F, and this is the 151B, one of them being their filter and one of them being their espresso burrs. And you can get this with two burr options or one, but they come in a carrier like this and you can swap burrs in and out and they have two carriers. So one's obviously in the grinder right now and you have the second grinder carrier. So if you wanna swap from filter to espresso burrs, you can do that by just a few screws. It all comes apart and you can put the new burr carrier in there. This is an SSP burr. And like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about burrs later in this video, so stick around for that because I think it's an interesting conversation. And what I'm really excited for, especially within this 83 millimeter burr world, it's new, there's lots of new burrs coming out. And I'm excited because we've been talking about 64 burrs for a long time. I like change. 
It has a 150 watt motor, which we talked about in my review, uh, is something that I find very interesting with a 530 RPM. So it's been slower than most flat burr grinders. And then the workflow itself is very traditional to the Niche Zero. It's very similar outside of some minor quirks being a flat burr grinder now. It does everything the Niche Zero did, but with big 83 millimeter flat burrs. This is the DF83 version two. And we've reviewed the version one before on this channel not too long ago. And I said it's a great value grinder with massive burrs. And this one has a lot of updates that fix a lot of the quirks that I criticized in that review six months or so ago. Now it's made by Turin who make the DF64, the DF64V, the E, the P, all the grinders. It's just crazy. But this one is their flagship. Now that's going to cost you around $600 depending on the sales they have going on. And these grinders tend to have sales often. You'll find it between $550 and normally $700. Right now though at the filming of this video it's $600 US. For $600 you're going to get 83 millimeter item mill burrs installed on the grinder. These burrs here. They're an interesting burr. They're definitely good. And these are burrs that have been on much more expensive grinders for years as premium espresso options, especially in Italian espresso grinders. Now these are very good at making textured espresso. If all you care about is really nice gooey espressos, you love milk beverages, but you want some nice um, transparency to the cup profile, you want some juicy cups to go with it, then yeah, this is a great burr that'll get you great results if you just wanna spend the stock price and not have to upgrade it. They do a lot, and again, we'll talk about the aftermarket burr options a little later, because there's now a DLC burr option for a brew burr and an espresso burr. Now this grinder here I did get from Joe at Espresso Outlet. Joe's an incredible guy, and I wanna give him a shout out. He doesn't put any pressure for me to do that. He sends products like this for me to test and it's just been really helpful for a channel like mine to be able to grow so I'll leave Joe's shop down below if you're interested in checking this out now this one being more of an espresso focus grinder I would argue it spins at 1400 rpms with a 550 watt motor so this thing is beefy it's big it's chunky Sound. They think I'm funky. Goodness, girl. you huge and so now you're wondering, Kyle, what's new in the version two? The tolerances feel a little tighter on this grinder now, which they were already pretty good, so they're, they're much better. But out of all of the updates, what I'm most excited for is they've changed the declumper on this model and also added a plasma generator. It's their take on an ionizer to essentially remove any static as you grind your coffee. Let me show you real quick. It helps, and I think that's a good thing. I think any grinder in this price range now that doesn't have something to reduce static is behind. It's my stance. I think that things need to start having static reducers, ionizer, plasma generators, or just intuitive designs. But yeah, great to see that. And last but not least is this grinder here, which is the Zerno Z1. Now there is a Z2 coming out and it'll be out in the next month or two. Now I will be comparing that grinder specifically to this grinder and reviewing them extensively. But I want to compare this one here today because obviously the Z2 is not out yet. What makes the Zerno so interesting is that it has 64 millimeter burrs mounted vertically, but it also has fantastic features like a pre-breaker in the auger. As the auger feeds the beans into the burrs, it actually breaks them down. In fact, Val has leaned into this reality and this feature so heavily and also listening to the community's feedback that he now for the version two has multiple different augers. Really interesting to see because that'll obviously have impacts on the cup. That's something I'm excited to feature and focus on on that full review. So get subbed if you haven't already so you don't miss that video when it comes out. Everything is really high tolerances. Everything is magnetic including the front uh, plate. You can change these wood pieces out. You can get a lid for your hopper as well. And the adjustment knob is all measured in microns for the burr gap. Everything is really polished. It's very small and everything just feels really well built. But it is double the price tag for most of the grinders on this table with its stock price. But keep in mind when you're purchasing a grinder like this you are getting SSP burrs installed, either the high uniformity or the multi-purpose burr, whatever you decide. If you want espresso, I would recommend the high uniformity burrs, unless you prefer modern styles of espresso with lacking of texture. But if you want to do milk-based drinks, the high uniformity burr would probably be the way to go. And then the multi-purpose burr would be fantastic for filter coffee. Okay, time to brew some coffee and that's an exciting part of this video. So we're gonna talk about filter coffee and espresso and make sense of thoughts on both. We're actually gonna brew a filter coffee together on every single grinder on their stock burrs. And then I'm gonna talk extensively about espresso and my experiences I've had, both good and bad. But first, before we do all of that, I wanna quickly talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Standard Magazine. 
Now here we are on YouTube. You're watching a YouTube video. You're spending your quality time learning about coffee grinders. Well, good for you. You are part of the coffee nerd world. And regardless of where you're at in your coffee journey, I think you should check out Standard Magazine. This is a magazine that is obviously beautiful. It's really nice to read. It looks great as an art piece on any coffee table, but it also has fantastic articles. Like right now, I'm reading this article right here called Postcard from Central America. It's a focus on Tipica, a company that bridges the gap from roasters to producers. Now, you might not be a roaster and that's okay. It's articles like this that make you understand how the specialty coffee industry works because sometimes we can purchase a bag of coffee and just expect that it was easy. And often the process from seed two cup is not easy. And so it's articles like these that really can open our eyes to the process of roasting coffee, producing coffee, farming coffee, and give us a greater appreciation of why we're purchasing coffee at the prices we are, but also what goes behind every single cup of coffee. Right now, if you want to check out Standard, they have a free trial. You can use it by using the link down below. You can sign up, you can try out some Standard Magazine. If you don't enjoy it or you don't want to continue, there's no obligation, but I doubt that'll be the case because this is easily my favorite read. So go check it out, use that link down below. And thank you Standard so much for sponsoring Sponsoring this video. Got my roast cupping spoon, which is a machine we're gonna review on the channel fairly soon. Stay tuned. Today we're brewing a Wash Ethiopian. It's uh, roasted by Ma, and it is Yakro from uh, Ethiopia. It's a beautiful washed Ethiopian that has big lemon candy vibes. It is very sweet, delicate, floral. Being washed Ethiopian, that reminds me of what made me love Ethiopia many years ago. Also, I'm gonna make slurp noise now, so if you don't like that, then maybe skip ahead like 30 seconds. <laughs> So we've talked about this grinder, this grinder extensively on this channel, but let me give you a quick update after using these for a few months. Now when it comes to taste, the 078 is still for me one of the best filter coffee grinders, especially at this price range. Even at $650, I would still say this is a fantastic grinder for filter coffee, but at its Kickstarter price, it was a steal. This is the one with the turbo burrs and it does prove to have really juicy clean cups. Very low astringency. <laughs> Obviously that's gonna depend on the coffee you're using, but for this coffee here, it's really juicy. Lots of lemon, really nice acidity, but really great sweetness. It's just a really well-balanced cup that really has a lot of transparency. So for me, as a roaster, this is one of the coffee grinders that we have on our bar to cup with. We have multiple grinders to make sure that we test all different fields, but this one really proves to show and reveal a lot of negative attributes. So if you've got any defects or anything like that, this one really does highlight that like a magnifying glass. And so for enthusiasts and filter coffee nerds, this is definitely a high recommendation for me. And when it comes to build quality, like I mentioned, this is all metal. It feels really good to use. It does have some quirks, like the beans often get stuck up here if you do use RDT, hate that. You know, it, it does have a little static. It's not the fastest grinder to use. It does grind a little slow. You can turn up the RPM, but that will change your peak distribution. So you might have to change your settings as well. But overall, when it comes to like usability with this grinder, the 78 is really nice. So overall, I'm gonna give this a high score for filter coffee for espresso it's no dice. Like you're not gonna be able to pull the pressure that you want to. You might be able to, but I just wouldn't recommend it. It's not something that I would personally purchase for espresso. If you do, you're in the minority, but for most people, this is a filter coffee grinder only. Where this grinder right here is the 078S, and this is where things get really interesting. But what I've noticed is this is actually a second unit here I have now, a full production model, because I want to ensure that I wasn't just reviewing a pre-production, but to give my thoughts on a full production model as well. And receiving my, my 078S, I had the 078S burrs installed on this one for my full review. What I noticed was the 078S had significantly more astringency when the burrs weren't seasoned. So my original 078S burrs were seasoned heavily. I put about 10 kilograms of coffee through. It took me two hours of just grinding coffee through this grinder. I did find that these burrs specifically, you need to season, or you just have to understand that with time, they'll get better. Now, I wanna talk about the range on here because I said originally that this one didn't have a lot of range with the 078S burrs. Now, this is a full production model 078S and the range is completely fine for espresso. If I'm down at zero, I'm choking the Lily Bianca. It's fine enough, the range is perfect. What I will say is again, back to that seasoning is what you're gonna notice is out of the box, at least for me, is I had a lot of channeling with unseasoned burrs. As soon as I put a lot of coffee through this, which I wouldn't recommend you waste coffee, but just understand as you use this grinder, it will get better with time. It allowed the distribution to be just a little better, but you need to make sure your puck 
prep is really good. And as it ages, as it seasons, I found the shots to be as expected. The filter coffee is the same. It's really nice, but it's not quite what the 078 is. It definitely has some astringency, especially when the burrs aren't seasoned. And with seasoning, I don't take this one over this one for filter, but this is an all purpose grinder where this one is more of a single focus grinder. This one do espresso and filter. This one can't. When you're spending $650, you have to understand that an all purpose grinder might not be the perfect jack of all trades, but I would say when it comes to the 078S, it does both very well, better than most other grinders but it's definitely not perfect. But to summarize my thoughts on espresso here, the espresso is good. It definitely has body, but not quite as much as you would expect from something like the item mills, because these burrs are far better for filter coffee than the item mills in my opinion. Much juicier, much cleaner. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so the Niche Duo is interesting because it has that burr swap ability. Today, what we're gonna do is talk about the stock burrs right now, and we'll talk about aftermarket burrs a little later in this video. Now, the filter burrs, like I mentioned in my full duo review, are good at creating a juicy cup of coffee, something that you would enjoy with a little bit of complexity, creates a bit of fines there, so a little bit more approachability. It's a little easier to dial in than maybe something like an aftermarket burr that has incredibly uniform grounds. I find this is a grinder that will be good for most people for filter coffee with those filter burrs, and I think if you like darker roasts, you actually might tend to lean towards the espresso burrs. Now the espresso burrs are really good at making textured espresso. I think it's gonna be a happy burr for most people. You're gonna be happy, you're gonna be happy. If you like espresso, you like texture, you like milk beverages, unless you're drinking black espresso and you want the absolute cleanest cups of coffee possible, then maybe you would want a different burr. Maybe you'd want to step into an aftermarket burr. You know, right after finishing this 078 drink, coming to this one, it definitely is a very different cup. It still has a lot of transparency, but it's still, you've got a bit of a drying mouth finish, which I don't love, but again, I'm picky. And for most home drinkers, you might not care about this. Again, keep in mind, this is in the context of comparing these today. I'm not saying this is a bad burr. I'm just saying comparative to the 078, the 078 was much juicier, much lower astringency, and this one has a little bit more astringency, a little more complexity to the cup profile, and some people might actually prefer that because they might be a little easier to dial in, and it might be a little bit more approachable for most people. Now the DF83 is an interesting grinder to me. I think this is a grinder more designed for espresso. Of course you can use it for filter, of course you can use it for espresso, and you can use it for both methods, but I think the design, the way that it's built, the burrs that come with its stock, all kind of lean towards more espresso focus, which it's not a bad thing. I think it's something you should probably be aware of if you don't plan to ever upgrade this and just purchase it stock. Stock, it makes fantastically juicy espresso. I actually really love the espresso it makes, considering the price bracket that it's in. It's really nice to use for espresso. The port filter forks here work really well. You can stick your portafilter right in there, grind right into the portafilter, or using a dosing cup, and they have a new dosing cup for the version two, which I think is really nice, it sticks in there. For filter coffee, I do, I'm not super obsessed with the item L filter coffee, personally. I think it's fine. I think for the average drinker, if you like medium roast coffee, dark roast coffee, ignore what I'm about to say, because you'll probably be fine. I think you'll in fact really enjoy it because it creates great texture in the cup, you're having good body, and all the things you typically want to receive from a darker roasted coffee. Where I don't love the DF83 stock burrs and the item L burrs is in its light roast coffee, filter coffee profiles. If you want just like milk-based espressos or you want black espresso, but more of like a traditional black espresso, so slower shots, you know, maybe one to two, one to two and a half, maybe one to three ratios, this would be fine. It'll actually do really well. It is not a grinder for everybody. It's not in its stock form a grinder for me, but I know it's a grinder for most people. I would probably take something like the O Generation 2 over this grinder for filter coffee, personally. It just leaves a little bit to be desired. I, I don't think it's a filter coffee focused burr. But you can upgrade the burrs, and now there are DLC burrs for both espresso and filter. We'll talk about those burrs a little later in this video. <laughs> I don't want to 
spend too much time on the taste here with the Zerno because I will be reviewing this in a separate video. And this isn't a 64 millimeter burr highlight because we've countlessly talked about the burrs on this channel. So you don't really need to know what I think about the multi-purpose burrs, but they are in this grinder here. You can also put the high uniformity burrs in here or any 64 millimeter burr for that matter. Right here, I have a ton of them and you got high uniformity burrs and you've got you know, cast lab sweet burrs. Uh, these are some other burrs from Fellow. Like you can put whatever burr you want in here, more SSP burrs. There's no question that the filter coffee is fantastic on this. The espresso is great too, depending on the burrs you put in there. What I do want to talk about is comparing the burrs on this to some of the 83 millimeter burrs. So for those who really want to know, and maybe you haven't heard anything about the Zerno at this point, Yes, this grinder makes fantastically delicious coffee. And a lot of that has to do with the burr set, but a lot of it has to do with the tolerances and the way that the auger breaks down those coffee beans before it gets to those burrs being a pre-breaker. So I do find that the 64 millimeter multi-purpose burrs are better on this grinder than most, if not all the grinders that taste it, except for maybe the P64. Let's talk about that briefly. The P64 is a very interesting grinder and probably the biggest competitor to this. Now, one thing this doesn't have that the P64 has is variable RPM. That might matter to you and it might not, but if it does, obviously that's a selling feature. One thing I will say is that the motor on this is incredibly loud compared to the P64. The P64 had this very premium feeling motor, similar to almost the Time War where it ramps up speed very quietly and honestly, if you you didn't have coffee grinding, you wouldn't know the P64 motor's running. It's one of the quietest I've ever heard. Where this one, it's just not. So I'm not saying that this is too loud. In comparison to that grinder, that's something that I noticed. I wanna talk quickly about burrs because I think when we're talking about grinders that have burr swap options, aftermarket burr options, it's really important to talk about this. You might be interested in upgrading your grinder down the line and changing your burr and because of that, let me help you. Okay, where do we start? So let's talk about the aftermarket burrs here first. So let's talk about SSP. Now, this is the high uniformity burr right here. This is this 83 millimeter high uniformity and it's little brother of the 64 millimeter high uniformity burr. This is a burr by SSP focused on creating espresso. I did find that the body on the 83 was not much different. If anything, I found it slightly less. Uh, it wasn't as textured as the 64, and I found the clarity to be just a little higher, so a little more transparency to the cup, but not by much, and only if you're gonna put them side by side. By no means would I say you should upgrade to 83 millimeter burrs just for the advantage that this has over this one, though if you do have an 83 millimeter burr grinder like these guys, I definitely think this is a great grinder burr to check out, but it holds true to all the attributes of the 64. I didn't enjoy the 83 millimeter filter coffee. I found in comparison to other burrs on the table, it's fine. And if this is the only burr that you have, you're gonna enjoy it. But I think other burrs produce better filter coffee at a cheaper price range. So in summary, the 83 millimeter high uniformity burr is like its little brother in the 64, but I don't enjoy the filter coffee at brews. I was hoping that that would open up a little bit as we got bigger but I really didn't find the filter coffee inspiring or tasty. It was good, but in comparison to some other birds on this table, it was really muted in comparison when it came to its acidity, and the sweetness was just not quite there as what some other birds offer on this table. I found that if I pushed extractions up to 1.4, 1.5, then I was starting to get a lot of astringency, a lot of drying of the mouth, and Honestly, I just was not excited about that for such an expensive burr, so that's the high uniformity. Let's talk about the manual purpose burr, and this is something that people are really wondering about. How does this compare? Now, right now I have the 64 version of this in the Zerno right here. Now, I cup these side by side, and I found this really interesting. I was really expecting this burr to blow the 64 millimeter burr away, and I put this on the Niche Duo. Now, on the Niche Duo, I got great results. It was really tasty. It was really sweet. It was really transparent. It was all the things I loved about the multi-purpose burr. But when I cupped it beside the Zerno with the 64 millimeter burrs, I actually prefer the 64s. And I have a theory on why that might be. I don't think this has to do with the burr. I think the ceiling on the 83 millimeter burr is higher. By science and what we should know with stats alone, that tends to be the case with larger burrs, that this should be able to produce a better cup. I think when it comes to the pre-breaker design, the high tolerances on the Zerno, 
it just makes a tastier cup of coffee. I pushed extractions on both of these, the 23, 24% extractions, and this one had very low astringency. You could start to get it when you push extractions real hard, but for the most part, it was pretty good. With this burr here, I started to get astringency at lower extractions, like 22, 23% extraction. That's when I was really starting to get uh, a little bit of astringency. Not a lot, and definitely not a reason not to buy this burr. It's really good, but comparing to the Zerno, I found the comparison of that grinder with a smaller burr set to produce better results. That was my results. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say this is this was better for me, but in the niche, I didn't find it to be better. Now, you're probably curious. I, I did also put this in the DF83 version too, and the results were similar. I did find that I could push extraction slightly higher with the DF83. The tolerances seem to be a little tighter on that grinder, but even still, I did find the Zerno with the 64 millimeter version to do better. So that's not a knock on this burr. That's more of a praise for this grinder not sponsored they have no idea i'm even making this video but i kind of want an 83 millimeter zerno now that's kind of what i want and if that happens this burr will slap but that all said if you have an 83 millimeter grinder you want really good filter coffee this is a great burr it's expensive at 350 dollars. and lastly we have this burr right here now it's currently fitted on a DF83 housing for the burr carrier. And that's because this is the DLC burr that is going to be optional for the DF83. This is the brew version. And I gotta say, I was very impressed by this burr. Honestly, it's everything you'd love from a brew burr. It's got real big juicy cups, very low astringency, and honestly, it's a really good option. I think as a budget alternative to the multi-purpose, this is a great option for most people. If you just can't justify the SSP burrs because of their price at these sizes, they're no joke, then this is an option that I would definitely recommend for brew burrs. I do find the design of this burr interesting. You can see the pre-breakers on the multi-purpose burr are very large, and then you have this flat cutting surface on the outside. This one kind of takes that to a little bit more of an extreme. So you have a smaller pre-breaker and then you have these more aggressive teeth for the cutting teeth. So I do find this grinds incredibly fast on the DF83 between the 1400 RPM and uh, I guess the aggression of these pre-breakers. Coffee just spits out of this grinder real fast and I find the results pretty good. Personally, don't think they're better than this one in my experience, but I find them pretty good. I think that'll be available on Espresso Outlet soon. I don't think they're available yet, but when they are, definitely a good option for your DF83 version two. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Caspers in the 83 millimeters. They are en route, but I couldn't get them in time for this video. I do apologize for that. I do want to clarify that this is a really good burr. Both of these are. Um, it's just really hard to compare it when you have it, such a great grinder like the Zerno. Keep in mind, once you put this burr on something like the Niche Duo, or the DF83, you're getting to the same price bracket as the Zerno. And that's why I really wanna compare this grinder because that's what really is the verdict here because you are gonna spend a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars for a grinder once you get these burrs installed. And since we're comparing all these burrs to compare the 78 millimeter burrs to the SSP versions or other 83 millimeter burrs, I would say the turbo burrs are probably the best of any filter burr I have on the table here. I think they're still better than the 64 millimeter Zerno. I do think the 078 is one of the best filter coffee grinders in its price range. And really anything around $1,000 or under, it really is impressive for filter coffee. Really juicy, really clean cups of coffee. Now the 78S, I think in its stock form without any seasoning, it does leave a little bit to be desired, but I would still take this burr over the high uniformity SSP burr for filter coffee. So what are the verdict on these grinders? Well, let me walk you through each one of these real quick, give you my final thoughts, and we're gonna wrap this video up. The Timer grinders are fantastic value. If you purchase them on Kickstarter, I think you'll be laughing regardless of which grinder you picked, especially in the 78 series. I really like both of these. I like the workflow. They're not perfect. They're quirky in certain attributes. They get beans stuck up in the hopper. The dial is pretty good for the 078, but I prefer the 078 stepless. Overall though, the build quality is fantastic. I don't love how the RPM dials on the back of this grinder. Who thought that was a good idea? But other than that, I mean, the grinds knocker is good. And I think if you like more third wave style coffee, you're gonna enjoy the 078S for espresso as well. And then this guy is just an absolute filter beast. Now the DF83s are, in my opinion, some of the best value grinders on the market, especially if you wanna throw like the multi-purpose burrs in there now, the Caspers, or even the DLC brew burrs to get really fantastic, juicy filter coffee is super possible. I do prefer the workflow on these for espresso. I find filter to be a little more messy. And even with the plasma generator to reduce static on the DF83, I do find that it's still a little messy when doing filter coffee. And I, 
I don't love bellows. I think bellows are still really cheap. This would be fantastic for me if I could just get rid of the bellows and have no retention. But even with the plasma generator, I'm finding I'm still needing a bellows to pump these out. So for me, I would still take a grounds knocker like this on the time war over a bellows. I just find these really cheap and they're not great to use. And this might be a personal thing. I, I don't love pouring my beans into a bellows. I just find it's just a quirky thing for an expensive piece of tech where this just seems like it's really well engineered. And this, just seems like an afterthought. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't think I am. Now, I was really excited for the Niche Duo's release. Originally, its price was too high, and then lowered it and got rid of the VAT tax that I covered that in my review if you're wondering what I'm talking about, but they now made it a lot more affordable. Even still, I still had to pay $200 import fees here into Canada, so that makes it still a very expensive grinder, more expensive than the DF83 that is available in the United States, but it's a very interesting grinder because the Zero was just so praised. It was so desired. There were wait lists, and it was just so insane to find one, but the Duo hasn't received that same hype, that same love, the same passion, the same charm that people really loved about the Zero. I think it's because we live in a different age where there are more grinders available to us. The Duo is a fantastic grinder and I, I do need to say I wouldn't overlook it. I think these are better value and I think these are more interesting in different ways. But if you just want a simple grinder and you love the workflow in the Zero, you just want flat burrs and now aftermarket options as well, the Zero might be the best grinder for you. I do prefer the workflow in the niche over the workflow on the time war, mostly because of this hopper and the pop grinding that we face within this grinder. If you don't have this lid on, you're gonna have beans popping everywhere. The grounds cup is nicer on this grinder here and the grounds knocker is really nice because I still find myself knocking this lid to get any residual grounds out, even though it's minor, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 grams. I'm fussy about that stuff, but let's talk about the Zerno. I think the Zerno is a fantastic grinder. It's double the price of the DF 83, but if you want the same kind of results in the DF83 to the Zerno, you're gonna have to get SSP burrs or aftermarket burrs, and those can be $350 or more, which brings this grinder up to almost $1,000 before tax, and that brings it closer to the Zerno. Now, the nice thing with the Zerno is it comes pre-aligned. Side by side with the multi-purpose burrs in the Zerno towards the multi-purpose burrs in the Niche Duo in 83s, I actually preferred the Zerno and I do think that pre-breaker actually plays a part in this. The tight tolerances, pre-aligned burrs, all those factors. But I wasn't in a spot where I thought the 83 millimeter multi-purpose burrs were that much better. I think I would personally take a 64 millimeter burr grinder like the Zerno over modding these. And so my recommendations would be if you just want a really good filter coffee grinder at the best price point, I think the 078 from Time War is still one of the best juicy sweet cups of coffee that have great acidity and great transparency. If you want an espresso only grinder, my recommendation is the DF83 for its value. I think at $600, it's fantastic. If you just want textured espressos, then I think the item mill stock burrs on the DF83 are really good. I'd be really keen to see the DLC espresso burrs and how those compare. I've heard they're very similar to the high uniformity burrs from SSP at a lower price range. If you want a multi-purpose grinder, this is where things get a little more difficult and I'm torn between the 078S and the Niche Duo. I do think the Niche Duo is really good, but you need to put aftermarket burrs in it to be able to really compete with something like the 078S. I think the stock burrs are fine. I just don't think swapping burrs is realistic for me. And so I'm gonna probably put the espresso burrs in there if I wanna use it for multi-purposes. And the espresso burrs just aren't that fantastic for light roasted filter coffee, but they're better for like medium darker roasted filter coffee. So if that's your jam, the Niche Duo with the espresso burrs might be fine. But again, if I'm gonna compare it and use it as a multi-purpose grinder, I would probably lean towards the 078S because it's a multi-purpose grinder. And if it's just for filter, I'm probably leaning towards the Time More at this price. And if I can spend more than the Zerno, and that's where things get a little tough for me. And as a disclaimer, I would love to say, don't feel the FOMO. Like these are great grinders, but if you have a good grinder at home, maybe not quite as big as this, I'm sure it still makes tasty coffee. And I would say, maybe your money's best spent on buying better coffee or upgrading your water. And those attributes will probably improve your coffee game a lot more than a new grinder will. The most important attribute is coffee. It's a big reason why I started a coffee roastery to really stick my money where my mouth was and really invest into producers and farmers around the world. But if you are in the market, these are all fantastic options. I hope this helped. And now I want the conversation to be passed over to you. Which one would you choose? If you had the option to pick any of these, budget wasn't a concern, would you pick the Zerno? Or would you pick something like the 078? If you want a multi-purpose grinder, are you gonna go with something like the Time War 078S, the DF83, 
the niche duo would you swap burrs on the niche duo or would you put aftermarket burrs in please hit that like button if you haven't already it really helps this video took a lot of time a lot of testing months of tasting coffees late at night till one two in the morning it's been exhausting and so if you appreciate that just please hit that like button on the way out share it on social media on instagram tag me on an instagram story and i'll repost that and i'm going to leave a link to my patreon down below where i give away gear monthly give away coffee monthly and you have access to certain channels within our discord channel that are only available to patrons have a wonderful day i love every single one of you guys we'll see you guys all in the next video peace